So let's run through the process of getting Ubiquiti's unified controller software set up to run as a service on Windows Server. So the environment I've got here is I've got Java 8 installed, both the 32-bit and 64-bit versions, and I've installed the latest unified controller software. So to get it to run as a service, the first thing you need to do is to just close out of the application. And to do that, you just simply hit the X and tell it that you are sure that you want to close it. And then we need to launch the command prompt as an administrator. So the first thing you need to do is to switch directories to the directory that the unified controller software is installed in by default. And the next thing we'll do is we'll be issuing a couple of Java commands. And we can do that simply by typing Java into the command line because during the installation, it adds Java to the system path variable. So the first command we'll issue is to install the service. And so that command creates a service and then sets it to start with the server automatically, but does not start it when it's done. So the next thing we need to do is to start the service using the start SVC option. We can verify that it's started by launching Chrome and browsing to the local host using HTTPS port 8443. So there we go, we're getting a response, that's good. And of course it's complaining about the, the certificate because it's not trusted certificate. We can run through the setup options here and we'll do that just real quick. So we want to test to make sure that we can connect to the Unify Cloud. I'm not going to add any devices. I'll save that for another snip. Same thing with the Wi-Fi. So I'll add in these credentials here real quick. And then the, the password it has here for the device authorization, this is a random password, so you can see mine all you want. Uh, uh, but that's, that'll be useful if you ever need to SSH into your devices. And we'll confirm the settings. And so this next option is for connecting your controller to the Unify Cloud. And this I highly recommend because it allows you to log into their portal and then they get redirected to your controller. So I'm going to put in the username and password for my, my Unify account. And the reason I'm going through this as a part of this video is because if you don't have both the 32-bit and 64-bit versions of Java installed, this won't work. So to demonstrate that it does with both versions, all right, so, so I'm logging in here with my, my Unify account, my cloud account with Unify, and this should take me to the main screen of my controller. And it does. That's great. So that's how you set up your Unify controller on Windows Server to run as a service and then associate it with the Unify Cloud.